old idea of the open academy, which is an egalitarian uh, discussion in an open setting. So, new frontiers. Uh, in new frontiers, there is a focus on the generic aspect of a meeting between people, the potentialities of the encounter itself, ways to link the conversation to already existing practices, and the generation of new actions and ideas. We also have to thank Frontline Club for being able to be here today and uh, Norsk Kulturfond and Fritur that uh, uh, sponsors New Frontiers. Uh, we're very happy and we're thrilled to have Abdullahi Hussain here, who is, uh, was the President's Advisor in Agaden province in Ethiopia and the head of the TV channel Chakira News. Uh, you already introduced a, uh, a bit of it, but now from exile in Sweden, he is taking the material to the International Criminal Court in Hague. Uh, and part of the material that he is going to show today is going to be uh, uh, shown in NRK, but I was not able to get the time yet, so follow NRK there. We will, we will publish it on the website when it will be shown. And it is following him. And uh, the Swedish journalist. then uh, was my childhood friend so uh, I was based my, my last couple of years I was working in Addis Ababa doing different uh, business works uh, and he used to come to Addis Ababa uh, for different governmental conferences where we used to meet and hang out uh, and just meet as a friend uh, most of the time so he started encouraging me to join the regime in Nova then <clears throat> I knew that uh, from the previous regimes in Ethiopia that there was a lot of uh, problems in Ogaden. So he was uh, using that to push me to work with them. And finally, uh, late 2008, I decided to join him and I went back to the capital city of Ogaden, Jijiga, or Somali Regional State, where I started uh, mobilizing the youth of Somali Regional State, or Ogaden. Uh, so, uh, during my first two, three months, when I got the chance to travel deep in Ogaden from village to village, I, I realized that there was crimes against the humanity, there was uh, human rights violations that were taking place in Ogaden. So I was really shocked, uh, and I, I went back to the capital city of uh, Ogaden, which is Jijiga, to meet the current president, uh, and during that time he was the head of the regional security and justice bureau i met him uh, since he was the person that encouraged me to join them and since what he used to tell me was that the government was doing good things for the people and for the uh, country so i told him uh, what i have seen i told him a lot of things that i have seen in those villages i was visiting but unfortunately his reactions was uh, telling that he was aware of what was going on, what was happening, and in fact, he was one of the people behind those kind of crimes against the humanity. Uh, after that, I decided to quit the job I had with them and go back to my normal life and business. Uh, but unfortunately, in Ethiopia, uh, or in that, specifically in the administration of Ogaden, if once you join uh, and once you start working with them, it's very difficult and very hard to stop working with them because they will come after the person asking different questions and the person might end up in prison. Uh, the problem is they will immediately uh, got the feeling that if the person has become against what they are doing. Uh, and that's, that's really impossible. That was impossible for me during that time. But instead I had another idea uh, and that was collecting uh, evidences going out of the country and showing, uh, showing that evidence, sharing with the international community. So uh, that was uh, 
uh, why I changed side uh, because I couldn't watch uh, all those crimes against the humanity that was taking place. I couldn't stand it uh, when a military man is raping teenage girls, uh, when they are torturing innocent people uh, to death, uh, where they have killed and murdered a lot of people, uh, where there are hidden genocides that took place and that is happening, uh, maybe as we speak now, because the last genocide that took place in Ogaden was only before three months. So there was all these crimes against the humanity and I couldn't stand it and that was why I changed your side. Uh, then I was collecting video evidences, not just uh, written documents but video evidences. Uh, and I was collecting these video evidences for, the, for three years starting from 2009 and 2012 when I uh, last left. So today I have some of these uh, videos, which is around 100 hours, uh, the videos I have in my hand. Uh, we made a documentary out of these videos, a documentary that uh, is around one hour, 58 minutes, uh, which is around one hour, that was sent on the Swedish national television. And I hope that will be also on uh, Norwegian TV, because I know that they have taken the film. Uh, but today here I have uh, four or five different short clips to show you that uh, at least some of the videos so that you can see what's happening and you can see the situation for your own. So let me um, start with this video which is uh, about the main prison in Ogaden state which is known as uh, Jail Ogaden. Uh, in this prison the prison is really very small, it's around 500 kilometers, uh, or maybe 600 kilometers, but there are around 20,000 prisoners in that prison. And you can imagine how tight the situation is in that prison, but let's just take a look at this video and then I will explain. På en av de många filmer som Abdullahi kopierat syns den här mannen, Ogadens vicepresident Abdullahi Bouerer. Han kommer att spela en viktig roll i det som händer med Johan och Martin i öknen. Här leder han ett märkligt möte med poliser och vakter i Ogadens stadsfängelse i staden Jijiga. Deltagarna tror att ledningen vill få slut på missförhållanden i fängelse och uppmanas att berätta vad de själva sett. Och det som kommer fram är anmärkningsvärt. Syftet med mötet är inte vad deltagarna tror. Allt spelas in för att president Omar ska kunna se banden och identifiera säkerhetsrisker. Vem pratar för mycket och vem kan hålla tyst? The, the way I managed to get the videos was when it was with the president, then I have the chance to copy everything on my laptop and later on put it on a hard drive and hide it somewhere. These prisoners are uh, innocent people of uh, the Ogaden region. They just arrest anyone they want to uh, take money from. Uh, maybe they have some other reason. Uh, and sometimes what they do is they just open the gate of the prison and they arrest every visitor. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this. 
this is one of the videos that I have uh, with me. Uh, the reason this, this meeting was going on for one week uh, and they were filming uh, the whole thing. Uh, the reason behind the filming this meeting was that the president and uh, the other guys that are working with him, they are afraid that someday there might be uh, some uh, human human rights organizations or other committees to investigate the crimes that has happened in Ogaden. So this time uh, they were trying to see uh, among the police which one may talk if there is a pressure on them or and which one may hide the situation in the prison. So we have the vice president, the current vice president, and all the, and also the chairman of the political party that's running that state in this meeting, and he's the one who is leading this meeting. So they are putting pressure on the police so that they can talk, and only to see who will talk and who will not talk and be capable of hiding what's going on. Uh, so as you can see, they, the police of that state, the police of the government of Ethiopia, is talking about how they are torturing people. They are talking about how many people they have killed because of the torture. And if, uh, in these videos, they are also discussing that they have two different groups which are uh, known as torture group. This torture group is torturing the new prisoners and the, all the prisoners that are, in that, that are in that prison. And because of this torture, they have killed a lot of people. So in this video, they are mentioning the number of the dead people and also they are mentioning the names, the names of the dead people. So it's very clear that uh, in this prison they are torturing people and they have killed a lot of people and they are currently killing people in this prison. As you have seen, they are uh, talking about different numbers. They say in Sigis we are dead during this day and during this day there was five people dead and during this day there were 13. And that goes on and on and on for a week. So anyone can imagine how many people have died until now. And it's not something that has stopped. It's something that's going on as we speak now. I will uh, show you another short video of uh, this same prison where they are discussing about the situation of the ladies, of the women in that prison. Mahavisti Saka legacy they have to get the head to let the Yanka Somali, the Ayah, the mantle of Katerson, I and Urki on a left, Hatava, Papoli, and Lavadan, Mahabos, Ayahuaha, see the into the Nitimit Katimaki, who have to feed the Yamada, we never had to let the Yanka Somali, the Mudana Abdi Mahamud. Wale, Wahalo, see the Yam Hakishiski, Allah Gai, Uruka Mahatana, or Korolov, Pepsa Hadim Ogavenu, Makasaswayan. Maka Hawaiian Tas Fedel and Hawaiian de Kwaki to the Kate Eha, Hishiske, Lagashi, in a Casa Bahia Muchesa. TV reportage it's out at hand on resultat of a freed some tall. Men in with Abdullah Hussein, and on flesh of them free in a fongana, in the Als Gerilla soldater. Wavans out smuggled the video filmer framgår at fongana fot betala for a slepas fria. Mahoski Lafine. Det är situationen för kvinnorna. De betalar inte bara pengar för att släppas fria. De får betala med sina kroppar. But these women are the ones that's getting raped every day in the prison. Uh, some of them are pregnant, some of them have children, uh, and 
from the files you can see some of the police saying that some of these children belong to the commissioner, Mr. Atipadeh. So, uh, of course, not only for the men, but also for the women uh, in that prison, there is the torture and the killing and all that is going on. But when it comes to the women uh, prisoners in that prison, uh, the difficult thing, uh, the horrible situation is that they have, uh, they have a special room in that prison, which is well decorated, and they are using uh, that room only for raping the girls in the prison, only the teenage girls and the good-looking girls in that prison. And it is the police of the state that is raping these girls. Uh, but not only the police, but also the officials that's raping these girls. From the files, we can see that some of the policemen here talking about the commissioner. Uh, and the commissioner is the head of the prisoners in that state. Uh, so. We can see that they are saying there are children in the prison and some of these children belong to the commissioner of the prisoners in that state, the man you have seen in the video. So from this, uh, what we can see is that they have this special room, they are raping the girls in that prison, and in fact there are pregnant girls that are in the prison, there are children in the prison, there are children uh, being born every day in that prison. And this is all because of the administration. Uh, uh, but the other uh, terrible situation is that it's still they are using these prisoners for political propaganda. What they are doing is that from the files you can see that uh, some of the police are saying anyone who is being released from this prison is because of negotiations. So they are collecting money from the prisoners and they are raping the girls and then they are releasing them uh, by gathering group uh, of around 100 or 200. So once they have 200 or maybe 300 prisoners to be released, the president is coming there with the, uh, with the uh, uh, cameramen and journalists standing in front of the prison and they are use, they, he said that he has pardoned around 200 300 prisoners uh, because of they wanted to make peace and sometimes they use the uh, different festivals uh, in, in, in the region. Uh, and also, uh, when a prisoner is leaving the prison, they must stand in front of the camera and they must say that they support the government and uh, everything is okay and they were wrong and they were criminals. So this is the situation in the main prison of Ogaden. This is what's happening right now. It's not something that has happened before a year or two years. It's a current situation and it's what's going on right now as we speak. So this is just one of the videos uh, that I smuggle out. I also smuggle out a lot of other different videos. Uh, among them, I will uh, show you one video that uh, shows a hidden genocide that took place in one of the villages. Uh, there was a time I was traveling together with the president from village to village and we met uh, the people of this village called Galalshe, uh, where there was a hidden genocide. Uh, and as some of you may know, uh, the problem in Ethiopia and the problem in, in, in that region is that the people are afraid of the government. So whenever there is a governmental meeting, whenever they are meeting someone from the government, all they have to say is that they support the government, they love the government, uh, and everything is good. But uh, during this time in this village, there was an old man who couldn't take it, who was speaking from his heart. So I will show you what that old man was saying. Every village we went, everyone is afraid of the president and of the new place. And everyone was saying that they love the president and they have everything they need.
president is sort of a uh, fan of making uh, film propagandas. So uh, there was two cameramen with us recording uh, everything so, uh, so that later on they can edit and put it on the uh, local TV they have. But there was this older man who couldn't, uh, who couldn't take it, who couldn't just uh, keep quiet. Getting out this kind of evidence so that those people who were co who were being convinced, uh, who were being cheated by the Ethiopian leaders, could see what's happening and what the uh, real situation in Ethiopia is. Uh, now, being in Norway, I would like to say that uh, the government of Norway, uh, of course, has signed an, some kind of agreement with the intelligence of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that uh, the intelligence of Ethiopia is the ones that are committing this kind of crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. We have video evidences. It's not just that as if I am just against the government or something else. But we have video evidences. And video evidences don't lie. Anyone can take a look, anyone can watch, and anyone can give the, their comments. Uh, so, Norwegian government has signed some kind of agreement with the intelligence uh, security of Ethiopia, which is the same people that are raping teenage girls, same people that are torturing innocent people, same people that are killing and have murdered a lot of people in a lot of different places and in a lot of different times. Same people that are committing hidden genocides. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would, I would really like the people of Norway to see that and to understand the kind of agreement their government have uh, with this kind of regime in Ethiopia. Uh, thank you very much. I would be open for our questions. And now when I'm speaking to you, I'm addressing two different audiences. One are the Ethiopian and then the Norwegian. To the Ethiopians, if they were in a government in the countries that really, really, really care, most of you would be here by choice, but you are not here by choice. Ethiopian government talk about the economy, double digit growth, leave alone the human being, even animals, they go where the water is, they don't go where the water is not. They go where the food is, not where the food is not. If things were good in Ethiopia, within two months, 180,000 Ethiopians would never be deported back from the Arab countries. If things was good in Ethiopia, you would not be seeing in Ethiopians their kidney removed alive in the deserts trying to go to Israel and other places. If things are good in Ethiopia, the young Ethiopian women will not be suffering like the way they are in the Middle East. The thing is, the Ethiopian who rule the government, who rule the country has failed that. And we live on illusion. And that illusion is also getting here to be some people, even some, I've been in most even some Western countries, who believe that Ethiopia is doing the greatest things. The credit will be given where it's due, but we should say where it's not due. We've seen by the Swedish journalists who are being accused of being a terrorist, when the real terrorist is the government that rules their own peoples. Mm -hmm. Look, the Norway gives so much money to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing, but also they can do better. 
I'm not asking the Norwegian to free the Ethiopian people. It's the Ethiopian problem, it's Ethiopian who can help it. But when I see the donor country acting as if the problem is not there, you are hearing someone screaming, you pretend you're not hearing. You're seeing the blood, you pretend that you didn't see the blood. You're seeing someone saying that, help, and you seem like someone say they don't help me. That is in, unacceptable. There are Ethiopian in years. There are Ethiopian in years. Who have been living in Muktak? for 12 years or more. The Norwegian government signed an agreement <coughs> to deport Ethiopian. They couldn't sign with anyone but the, the most, the Ethiopian intelligence, which is torturing their own peoples. As you can tell from the videos, the whole man, the young lady, all of these people, Ethiopian who are here, People in Ethiopia are traumatized by the regimes. And sometimes I find that the government say that you, Ethiopian, if you go back because you've never been involved in politics, nothing will happen to you. And if you get involved in politics, you have the government who are coming with a picture and take the, the picture of those people. Which way can you do it? And I think the brother before me, what he said, and the video said it all. Now I just want to say that in Ethiopia, government passed a law, they'll call Charity Proclamation Bill. It is against the law in Ethiopia for a woman empowerment, for child rights, children's rights, for disabled, handicapped peoples. <coughs> And that's the government that still Western country continue to support, it, including the Norwegian. Ethiopian government passed a law called anti-terror law. For someone to write an article against its government, they will be accused as a terrorist. Mm -hmm. The frontier who are organizing this right now, if they were doing this in Ethiopia, they would be considered as a terrorist. The gentleman behind the camera, if he was in Ethiopia, he would be in a terrorist. Mm -hmm. And this is the government the Western country are supporting. Based on, because they are fighting on war on terror. Let me tell you this. The government in Ethiopia, usually I tell Ethiopian, when I speak, I have nothing to hide. Because tomorrow I may not be here. Let me tell you the truth, sometimes what most people don't understand. The government in Ethiopia has not been elected by the Ethiopian people. There is 547 seats in Ethiopia, only one seat by the opposition. That opposition is allowed during the debate only three minutes. Do you call that democracy? In Ethiopia, a one particular ethnic group who are five percent of the population, they control the prime minister, the minister of foreign affairs, the minister of justice, the key position. Get the ton, 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 get the ton